As far as I am concerned, and no doubt as far as all the boys here this morning are concerned. It's a wonderful hour or two of enjoyment. The villages of Langham and Hook lie on the river Clethai in West Wales. Langham on the main part of the river, Hook on the steep wooded banks of the western Clethai, which is tidal up to Haverford West, three miles away. Every spring, eight men, four from Hook and four from Langham, gather on the river banks to prepare their boats for the salmon fishing season. Compass salmon fishing, brought here by two men called Ormond and Edwards over a hundred years ago. The fishing is limited in time from the 1st of March to the 31st of August and limited in numbers to just four men from each of the villages. They have the distinct independence and accent of this little corner beyond what some people would call the true whales. The visitor is Mr. Taylor, the water bailer. Over she goes. Over she goes. No. You can manage her down now, can you? You can ease her down. You can ease her down, all right? All right? Call her out. Right. Morning, sailor. How are you? Some of these traditional black tar boats are more than 80 years old. Not too bad. You scraped the bottom of her now, haven't you? Oh, good. Uh, often yes. we're going to... Huh? Often we're trying to... Oh, down. not so bad. That There's the worst, worst so, thing. Uh, no. old barnacles often then. Yeah. The men from Hook are all ex-colliers from the anthracite mines which finally closed here in 1947. The men from Langham show that sturdy distrust of them for which the village is famous. Garfield Richards worked in the Hook colliery for 23 years. Billy Phelps is 74 and worked in the mine for 36 years. He fishes with his brother Tom. Did he? When? On the right, the leading light of the hook men, Harold Jenkins, who fishes with his brother Kenneth. On the left, Jack Griffiths, the baby of the group, still a stranger here after 30 years, because originally he came from Bargoid. Some of the Langham men keep their boats in the winter here at Black Tar Beach or in Langham Pill. The people who live here have always called it Langham, pronouncing it in the English rather than the Welsh manner. Glyn Morgan retired as headmaster at the Milford Haven Secondary School in 1975. For many years he's been treasurer of the Langham Rugby Club and has fished on the river all his life. Reggie Jones, one of the longest serving men on the river, a shipwright by trade, was born and brought up in the village. What would, what would, uh, got any idea about the cost of that kind of thing these days? About 40 or 15,000 extra. Much is that? Yeah, is that that? Yeah. We never, we, we never had one of those. Never. No. Mate, I, I don't know that I'd want that kind of thing. He's too big. No, very, very Tell nice me, for the Reggie, family. what about that, that old hulk there now? <coughs> yeah. Has she been there all, ever since you can remember? Ever since I remember. Huh? She's a carry limestone from the quarries over there, you know. Uh, and what, what did they do with that, then? Put them on the road. There is always a suspicion among outsiders that the salmon fishermen here catch more fish than it appears at first sight. They are suitably reticent about information on the numbers caught. When asked about good seasons, a faraway look comes into Reggie's eye. 
and he'll tell you that the last good season he can remember was in 1921. All the better stuff is on the other side of the of the till here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see uh, Kenneth's got his two boats up there now too. Uh -huh. them up. Mm. Is that what his grandfather kept them there as well? That's what his grandfather kept them. Yeah. yeah. He was a good fisherman though, Reggie. He was. Huh? He was a good fisherman. Uh, one, one of the best in Langham, I should think. Yeah, he was a good one. Oh, there's oh, the... been some good ones here, mate. Huh? Uh, there have been some good ones here. Some good yeah. fishermen? I should say so. Well, they were, they were brought in. They, 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 they lively, weren't they? Well, aye. Many as nine and ten children, some had 14 or 15. Good luck. What is that? Yeah. And what about you, you your own? What about your own grandfather? How many were they? Nine. All nine. Yeah. Five boys and four maids. And if you didn't get it out the river, you couldn't eat it. That's what it amounted well, to. What, well, what about this kind of fish in there? What, what did they do oh, about that? Then? Not a lot. What? Not a lot at that. Starve you, they would. What, what did your grandfather <laughs> always say? <laughs> see them. I said. See them. Paul just said they'll starve you. Sir. Never bother. Never bother with that. <laughs> Put that. Uh, you can put that stretcher in the boat there. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put all anchor down. Fishing has always been conducted at Langham. Oysters, cockles, and in season herrings. Every year to this day, a small fleet of very independent men set forth on all suitable tides and in any weather to pick up the valuable prize of herrings as they come up the river to spawn in February and March each year. In the old days, the sailing vessels would come to Langham to pick up the oysters, and the entire village would turn out to see them loaded. Nowadays, the beach is used in the summer for pleasure craft, and the expensive plastic yachts glide along where once there was nothing but black tar boats and oars to provide the motive power. The population of Langham stands at 900 people. The village has a church, a couple of chapels, and the rugby and cricket club. It hasn't changed much over the years, and still has a little of the feeling of the 12th century Flemish occupation, which changed its character for good. And yet, it has altered. Reggie Jones will tell you that in the old days, everyone in the village used to leave their front doors wide open all day. Nowadays, they remain shut. In the pub, Rather than Welsh hymns, they sing on Ilclymore Bartat and talk with suspicion of the Welsh visitors from the north and east who come to play them at rugby. Hook is only two miles away, but in terms of character, it could be a hundred. Here, the legacy of the anthracite mines still influences attitudes amongst the older members of the community. For the rest, like Langham, it's slowly becoming a dormitory for the workers of Haverford West, Milford Haven and Pembroke Dock, with the ubiquitous second home taking over in increasing numbers. A familiar story in 20th century Wales. But the physical evidence of the old mines is still here in Hook. The coal owner's house still looks out at Little Milford Quay, across the river where the compass men dip their nets. The nets, like every other bit of gear they use, are self-made. Not for them the expensive ready-made pieces of boating equipment, they're all in their own way skilled hands. Harold Jenkins of Hook. When we start on this net now, I start, I make a chain. And I put up 84 mashes. 84 like this, and count just the knots then. Then I pick them up on my finger, and they all form, and then I put the thread through, the cord, then I start off. And when I finish, when I pick that up, that's 40 mashes across. Then I go out, and then I go out to six knots down. Then, after I've done the sixth one, I'll start to rise, then to go out, you know, to shape the net. The net would be about 18, 18 feet, or 18 foot six. See? We're only allowed 20 feet span, you know, across the pole on the foot rope. That's, uh, that's on your license, you mustn't exceed that. You've got the, the, this new water, the South Wales Water Board. They altered, uh, they made us go then to a four inch 
Thus, from knot to knot, on your net. And anything smaller than that, you've got to take that net off. You aren't allowed to, to use that net. Yeah? Because the water bail is, they come round to see when we put our boats up there. He comes along whether we are there or not. And he'll go along the boat and drop a, a, a scale in and to see if we got the thing. Yeah? So, I mean, you can't put a small marsh in here in the bottom of the net because he hunts him right through. For 33 years, Harold, like the rest of them at Hook, worked with pride in the anthracite pits. That was the best coal in the world, the anthracite here. All that trade was going to France, India, Belgium, right across, all the way the boats was coming here to the quay. Uh, there was a caddy firm used to come here to load, and the colliery had six of their own vessels running to France, in Belgium. It's not at all strange how indelible a mark the pits here left on the men who worked them, a mixture of pride and village friendship which left anyone from Langham out in the cold. And you had to fill 20 drums a day. That was 10, 10 tons, two of us, two and three a ton. When our colliery finished in 47, all our work, the, the surface gear now, and our engines from underground that came up, electric, uh, electric ones and blast engines, they all went to Ammonport, to Ponte Dillus. And when them blokes come here to pick them up and to take them on the lorries, they said that was the best quality as they'd ever seen for the, for the gear that come out of it. And perhaps it was a good job it did close, or perhaps they wouldn't be here now. They'd be in the box. See? And, and the rest of us. Yeah. But they are still there, perhaps some of the liveliest 60 and 70 year olds you could wish to meet. Every year, just before the season starts in March, the Hook and Langham men meet at the fishermen's shelter on the banks of the Western Clethi to conduct the draw, which will decide who has first choice of a particular position on the river. The system is simple. If it's your first choice today, you then go to the bottom of the list, and it's your last choice tomorrow. Right, gentlemen, check him up. You call him Hello, Jack. Number four. L four, Jack Griffiths. Dear, dear, dear. The man who's doing the draw. Amazing thing. Well, this my fellow again. He picked his own number first. Uh, eh? L one. Mr. Billy Hello, Phelps. Well, that's another fiddle. Another fiddle? Oh, oh no, 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 don't die, I'm not going to have that with that. I'm fiddling the hooks, all right, don't worry. Hook, man. Well, you, you've done it again. L7. Seven. But again, another hook, man. Another hook, man. Garfield Richards, this time. I'm lying. What are you hiding over there? He's a good one. Number five. Are you not saying much to that? Nothing to that one. That was my own. Now, is that a fiddle? Yeah, must be. <laughs> I think you have marked these discs. L6, that's Mr. Kenneth Morgan. He's not here today. Oh. When's Reg coming? <laughs> oh, Reg is coming up, I believe. Yes, this is him now, L3. God damn. <laughs> A mystery. Last every year. Last every year, you are uh, not this year. I am, second to last. Don't second you? to last, oh, well, yeah. that's a good, good draw. Mm -hmm. That may come. No, no, you let your apologies. Oh, look, man in front of me that's again. That's possible Everyone. that will not come Careful. in the right well, time. Don't be behind me. Lay down. I don't know if it's better for Ed. I don't know if it's better for Ed. I don't know where you trade, or you're not. Nobody's sure about that. L8. L8. A man with a hat. Children. One more. I, I know it is. Uh, number two. Oh, number two. I've had, it. Oh, I've had it this time, boys. Why is that? I'm last. No, well, you wouldn't. Well, you're you're first every other year. No, first no, every other no, year. No. I'm last. The last will be first. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that. That'll come up. And the first will be last. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't think it makes one bit of difference what, where his turn is. No. I don't think it makes one bit of difference where his turn is. No, not one bit. Not one bit. Of, hey, no. Does it make a lot of difference? No. 
If he's for me, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Although the season starts in March, they don't usually begin fishing until May, when the Canada geese, who live on the river, start to enjoy the warmer weather. Even now, though, they're confined to tides that are over 20 feet in range, and to fishing only from midday on a Monday until 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday. The river authorities over the years, pressurized by the Rod and Line Brigade, have not looked on them very favorably. Twice, once in 1869 and again in 1939, compass nets were banned from the river. The term compass fishing derives from the appearance of the two larch poles, 20 feet long, which divide to hold the net between them. The poles, before they're used, are seasoned, buried in the river mudbanks for five years or more. Once the position, or the stake as they call it, has been chosen for the day, the warp is fastened as the stake appears above the tide, and then the rope is rowed across the river and anchored on the far side. There are only eight licenses granted. But Jack Griffiths, like the others, can appoint an endorsee to fish when he's not there. And you're back across and you my rope. And so they fish only for the two and a half hours before low water on the ebb tide. After testing the depth of water, the thole pins are removed and with the heavy 15-foot boats athwart the tide, they're ready to put out the poles, fix the spreader across them, place in position the stone that acts as a counterweight, and then with a great lunge, force the poles with the net between them into the water so that the bottom of the pole is touching the river bed. The tide pushes the net underneath the boat. And the fisherman sits with the three feelers running down to the bag of the net. When a fish yep. strikes the back of the net, the poles are violently swung upwards, and hopefully the fish is yours. On any one day, you may see five or six boats strung out along the western tethai on the falling tide, waiting patiently for the salmon or the suin to run. Right. This operation provides one of the few points of active cooperation between the villages of Hook and Langham. You may well wonder why that is so. Even up to this present day, there isn't a very nice feeling between Langham, and fish Langham fishermen and Hook fishermen. Nor I don't think if it go on for another century, there ever will be that, that feeling. Because they think somehow or other, as they brought it here, which they didn't, and we have come along now and taken it out of their hands. Oh, God. That's ridiculous. Reggie would, would, would know that. I mean, the, the fishing started, I mean, this village depended on fishing. They didn't depend on this kind of fishing. They depended on uh, oyster fishing, uh, all kinds of shell fishing. Uh, they used the seine net. Uh, all, the, all the fisher, there was, was never a fisherwoman in Hawke that I know of. Fisherwomen all came from Langham and they all carried the pannier in their basket. Uh, most of the fishing came from Langham. It just started in Langham. There were very few hook men actually fishing. 
there were some people that were working in the colliery and they were doing a little bit of fishing. But the present uh, fishermen over there at the moment, uh, they were taught all their fishing and knitting by Langham fishermen. And as regards competition, well, they live on the spot, you see, and they see fish and they know when we go over there whether there are any fish there or not, you see, and sometimes we say, are there any fish there today? They say, no, never seen one. But we know, we see, that there, there, there have been fish there. And, and at the end of the tide, when some are caught, we think, well, <coughs> uh, they, they told us a, a little white lie. We are brothers in arms. We are comrades. But the moment we're in that boat and that net is set, you're on your own. You are no friends. No friends at all. I don't want you to catch a fish. Although I say, oh, each caught one, good. But deep down in your heart, that's not the case. <laughs> no, no. I don't want you to catch them. It doesn't matter how many I catch. But catch them, they do, occasionally. This season has been one of the worst on record. Half a dozen fish a week, amongst all of them, are all they get. They blame the weather, the trawlers, the fly fishermen, and the illicit poaching of salmon, still carried out despite all the water bailiffs and new boats with which the authorities have equipped themselves. They either eat or sell the fish at the local market in Milford Haven. A medium-sized salmon at this year's prices might be worth 30 or 40 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. I see one coming around when I was coming up in the pool. This is so short as a salmon. With a big guy in there. There's a shoot a, 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 a bass. Have you seen any? Big bass. Over the years, most stock nets have been banned for the obvious reason that it's too easy to scoop all the fish out of the river if you simply put a net across it. The compass salmon fishermen have escaped because they're not what are called fixed engines. Their boats can be moved along into a suitable position in the river by hauling along the warp. The positions along the river are marked and named by stakes. Lake 1, 2, 3 and 4, bag 1, key, drop, lever, wooden plug, rail, stone, engraving bank. Each day, they take it in turn to choose their own position. The tide makes the business of fishing in this way a dangerous one, even for experienced men. Boats have been overturned, poles stuck in the river. Fishermen have had to swim for their lives in the dead of night. It's a hobby, and they claim it's no more than that, that none of them would change. Perhaps because it's such a tough, vigorous, enjoyable business, they've all survived as long as they have. By tradition, both the Hook and Langham men fish here on the western clether. But the Langham men have always reserved the right to fish on the eastern clether, where it runs below the grounds of Picton Castle. And it's there, as is his way, without publicity and without fuss, to see if on his own he can do better, that this week Reggie Jones has been fishing. He caught nothing. Two of the fishing berths on the eastern clether still bear the names of the men who founded this system all those years ago, Ormond and Edwards. They came in the early 19th century to work in the nearby anthracite pit at land shipping, and rumour has it that they lost their lives there in the great disaster at the garden pit when the river broke in and flooded the workings. Those who know the present-day compass salmon fishermen well think it would be nigh on impossible to stop these men fishing. But there are those who'd like to see the salmon fishing here, not to say the herring fishing at Langham, come to an end. 
but they've always been a law unto themselves in Langham and Hook, one of the last bastions of the individual, and it will probably go on that way for a very long time to come. It's like a poacher. When he takes up poaching, he gets into your blood, and you can't leave it off. It's only time that really takes a toll on you, and you have to give it up. And you give it up with a sad feeling.